So new information reveals that the Trump administration interfered even more in the census than we previously knew about. Let's talk about it in today's video. Hi, I'm Mike Greiner. I'm a lifelong Democratic activist who's concerned about the direction our country is taking. If you share my concerns, maybe you could like this video, subscribe to this channel, even click that little bell that will notify you when I post something new. Now, we're all well aware of the efforts of the Trump administration to exclude the count of undocumented immigrants and non-citizens from the 2020 census. They made all kinds of efforts to try to make that happen, most directly with a July 2020 presidential memorandum in which Trump specifically said that undocumented immigrants should not be counted with the census. Essentially, what Trump wanted to do is to exclude them from the way that congressional districts were drawn, allowing congressional districts to be even whiter and older than they would have been had they included these immigrants. As such, Trump was hoping to lean districting even farther in favor of the Republicans, allowing them to do even more gerrymandering than they're already doing. Well, at first, this might sound like not necessarily a bad thing, except for the fact that the idea of our census every 10 years is actually directly required in the Constitution. Article 1, Section 2 of the United States Constitution specifically says that representatives and direct taxes shall be apportioned among the several states which may be included within this union according to their respective numbers, which shall be determined by adding to the whole number of free persons, including those bound to service every term of 10 years and excluded, blah, blah, blah. That's where the three-fifths issue comes up that everybody's so familiar with. The actual enumeration shall be made within three years after the first meeting of the Congress of the United States and within every subsequent term of 10 years as they shall by law direct. In other words, the Constitution requires that there be a count of all free persons within each state. Now, of course, this is back in the day when we still had slavery and we were still involved in essentially a genocide against Native Americans. Nevertheless, one thing that's notable about this is it doesn't say anything about citizenship. Undocumented immigrants are still free persons living within a state. They need to be counted according to the Constitution. Just as an aside, by the way, there's substantial evidence that undocumented immigrants pay more into taxes than they get in benefits from taxes. So they actually end up being a net positive in terms of the income that they provide to the United States. I'll post a link here, by the way, to a video that talks about just how important immigration is to our country's economic health. It turns out, though, that the Trump administration was doing more than simply telling career officials within the Census Bureau that they needed to separately count undocumented immigrants. It turns out that they were directly involved in trying to change the procedures that the Census Bureau used. For example, what the Census Bureau will do is it uses certain statistical techniques to try to estimate how many people are in each district who don't actually return the required census forms. It's a very sophisticated calculation based upon any number of measures and in-depth research that's been done by the statisticians at the Census Bureau. Well, as it turns out, the Trump administration tried to change these procedures, making them more favorable to Republicans. All this information became public just recently as a result of a lawsuit filed by the Brennan Center for Justice at New York University's Law School, seeking to obtain details about the Trump administration's interference in the census. It turns out that Secretary of Commerce Wilbur Ross wasn't the only one directly trying to interfere in the census. It turns out that the Trump administration appointed Stephen Dillingham to head the Census Bureau, someone with very little experience in the statistics involved in the census, but someone who is deeply committed to the politics of the MAGA crowd. He joined two other political appointees who Trump tasked with making sure that non-citizens were not counted, Nathaniel Cogley and Benjamin Overholt. This trio put incredible pressure on the career officials to try to change their procedures to make sure that non-citizens were not counted along with the census. Again, contrary to the way that the census has been conducted every single time since 1790. These career officials actually produced a memo detailing all the efforts that were made to try to influence the census. Part of the document, by the way, that the Brennan Center received as a result of its lawsuit. For example, the memo also details how the political officials had pushed to try to get rid of the double checks of the data because they wanted to get this data to Trump's desk as quickly as possible so that he could certify it before he left office. 
it went so far that last January, a number of career officials in the Census Bureau became whistleblowers, accusing Dillingham of caving to political pressure to produce a tally of non-citizens that experts said could not be assembled. Dillingham denied the charge, but as a result of it, ended up resigning from his position. Well, we who care about democracy owe much to the commitment and integrity of these career officials within the Census Bureau. Their commitment to producing an accurate count based upon the requirements in the Constitution and not one changed based upon the political considerations of the current administration is something that will have ramifications for years to come. It's just one more example of how the career employees in government so often do difficult, challenging work, often under pressure from political officials who are trying to bend their work to their own benefit. I think all of us who care about democracy owe these brave individuals a big thank you. Hey, if you like that video, you might want to check out this one. It'll give you more ammunition to fight off the MAGA crowd and stand up for our small D and big D democratic values. I'll see you in the next video. In the meantime, let's hope for continued progress. Thank you.